Hey everyone, Brandon here from TruckSafe Consulting. If you're starting up a new trucking business, you've got a lot on your plate, but some things you can't afford to ignore are your compliance related obligations under the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations and any applicable state regulations. The reality is most newly registered motor carriers end up going out of business within the first year of operations, and too often non-compliance is the culprit. In this video, we're going to talk about the new entrant DOT audits and five things that fleets need to understand about them. So stay tuned and be sure to hit the like and subscribe button below to keep up to date on all of our new DOT related content. Highway transportation remains one of the most heavily regulated industries in the United States, at least when it comes to safety. Now, unsurprisingly, the federal and state governments periodically audit regulated carriers to ensure they're following the rules. And for newly registered interstate motor carriers, they must undergo a mandatory new entrant audit. So let's dive into the top five things that fleets should understand about these types of audits. Now, first up, all newly registered interstate carriers must undergo a new entrant audit. In 2003, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, FMCSA for short, established its new entrant safety assurance program designed to place additional regulatory scrutiny on first-time applicants for interstate U.S. DOT numbers and motor carrier operating authority. Now, for the first 18 months after applying for an interstate U.S. DOT number, a motor carrier is considered a new entrant and is more closely monitored by the FMCSA to ensure that it has effective safety management controls in place. And within the first 12 months of operation, the carrier will be notified of and must submit to a new entrant safety audit. So within those first 12 months, new entrant carriers will receive correspondence from an FMCSA investigator, typically by mail, to schedule the new entrant audit. Audits can be conducted on-site at the carrier's principal place of business or off-site via electronic record submission. Off-site new entrant audits have become more prevalent than on-site audits over the past five years. All right, number two on our list of things fleets need to understand about new entrant audits are that these audits are fairly cursory in nature. New entrant safety audits are fundamentally distinct from other types of compliance investigations that the FMCSA conducts. Now, whereas compliance investigations typically involve a more in-depth review of a sample of documents, new entrant audits typically involve a more cursory review of only a handful of records. Specifically, once a carrier receives receives the new entrant audit correspondence, it'll need to follow the directions it provides for how to get in touch with the agency to either schedule the audit or submit the requested documents. If the audit is off-site, the correspondence will provide instructions for logging into your safety measurement system account, viewing any outstanding document request, and uploading the requested documents. Ultimately, carriers will be required to provide and or upload the following documents as part of the new entrant audit. A list of all drivers that have operated for that carrier within the prior 12 months, including their names, dates of birth, dates of hire, license numbers, and states. A list of all vehicles, power units, and trailers operated by the carrier, including unit numbers, VINs, and plate numbers. Proof that the carrier has adequate levels of commercial auto liability insurance, which is usually shown on the form MCS-90. A sample driver medical card, a sample motor vehicle record for one driver, a sample driver license and or CDL, 30 days worth of driver logs, electronic if applicable for a single driver or time, time cards for short haul drivers, plus supporting documents for those records of duty status. And then a sample annual vehicle inspection report, the carrier's accident register, a sample pre-employment drug screen result if the carrier is subject to drug and alcohol testing rules, Proof of a random testing program, again, if the carrier is subject to those rules, and a list of all drivers enrolled in that program. Hazmat shipping papers, if the carrier hauls hazmat. So those are the documents that new entrant carriers will typically have to turn over uh, in the course of the new entrant safety audit. Now, once the investigator receives the documents, which generally must be provided within 20 days of the request, the investigator will review them for potential violations and may ask the carrier a series of follow-up questions or ask for additional documents. Okay, number three on our list. Certain violations will lead to a carrier automatically failing a new entrant audit. In particular, the FMCSA has developed a list of 16 specific regulatory violations which, if discovered during the new entrant audit, will cause the carrier to automatically fail. The 16 violations are, number one, failing to implement a drug and alcohol testing program when one is required, number two, using a driver known to have tested positive for alcohol, 
Number three, using a driver who has refused to submit to a drug or alcohol test when required. Number four, using a driver known to have tested positive for drugs. Number five, failing to implement a random drug and alcohol testing program, again, when one is required. Number six, knowingly using a driver who does not possess a valid CDL when one is required. Number seven, knowingly allowing a driver to operate a commercial motor vehicle with a suspended or revoked license. Number eight, knowingly allowing a driver who is disqualified to drive a commercial motor vehicle. Number nine, operating a commercial motor vehicle without having, in effect, the required minimum levels of auto liability insurance. Number 10, operating a passenger carrier vehicle without the necessary level of auto liability insurance. Number 11, knowingly using a disqualified driver. Number 12, knowingly using a physically unqualified driver. Number 13, failing to require a driver to complete a log or other record of duty status. Number 14, requiring or permitting the operation of a commercial vehicle that has been declared out of service before the repairs are made. Number 15, failing to correct out-of-service defects listed by a driver on a DVIR, driver vehicle inspection report, before the commercial vehicle is operated again. Or number 16, using a commercial vehicle that is not periodically inspected. Now, during the course of the new entrant audit, the agency will note other violations that aren't listed here, but those generally won't result in the carrier failing the audit. Okay, so that takes us to number four on our list, which is that new entrant audits will not result in a safety fitness determination. So unlike more comprehensive FMCSA compliance reviews, new entrant audits do not result in the issuance of a safety rating, meaning that new entrant carriers will not have a satisfactory, conditional, or unsatisfactory rating stemming from that new entrant review. That said, violations discovered during the new entrant audit can certainly lead to civil penalties and revocation of the carrier's USDOT registration. All right, so last but not least, carriers who fail a new entrant audit have options. New entrant audits are pass-fail, and carriers will be notified of their results within 45 days after the completion of the audit. Carriers who fail their new entrant audit will receive a list of violations that caused that failure and instructions for developing and submitting a corrective action plan. Now, these plans must be submitted within the time frame set forth in the notification, and if they're accepted, the carrier will move out of the new entrant program. If the plan is not accepted or if the carrier fails to submit one, the FMCSA will revoke the carrier's USDOT registration and operating authority if it has it. Carriers who fail the new entrant audit cannot reapply for a DOT registration until 30 days after the revocation date. Once they do, they will be once again placed back in the new entrant program and will be subject to another audit within the first 12 months. Okay, so that wraps up our discussion of new entrant audits. Suffice it to say, newly registered interstate motor carriers should take care to ensure they build out their safety management controls early on. Without a firm, safety-minded foundation on which to build, carriers often have difficulty meeting their compliance obligations, which can lead to enforcement action and out-of-service orders. If you're interested in better understanding your compliance obligations in key areas like hours of service, driver qualification, vehicle maintenance, drug and alcohol testing, and more, be sure to check out our innovative online compliance courses for safety managers and drivers over at trucksafeacademy.com. Also, be sure to check out our detailed compliance articles on our website at trucksafeconsulting.com and follow us on our various social media pages for the latest highway transportation news and analysis. Thanks for watching.